Weighted rates. Uh, it's kind of a weird name. Makes sense. I don't know. Uh, this is the last section of Chapter 6 in our book. Some of you other random people out there watching this, who knows where it falls in your book. Uh, so related rates, what this is, is geometry on steroids, where we calculusify um, some old school stuff that you've done in the past. Uh, let's do an old school geometry question, just to uh, kind of get us primed here. Uh, find the volume of a sphere with the radius of 8 feet. Uh, well, the formula for volume is, uh, if you don't know this, it's 4 thirds pi r cubed. So if I want to find the volume of a sphere with the radius of 8 feet, that would simply be 4 thirds pi times 8 cu cubed. Um, 8 cubed off the top of my head is escaping me, although I could figure it out in a couple of minutes. Um, I'm just not, don't feel like doing that. Uh, so 4 thirds pi 8 cubed, and then our units would be um, feet cubed. We always, always, always need to include units. And that is what you did in geometry, and that was nice, because it is a sphere, and it is always a sphere, and the sphere never changes shape or never changes size. It is just a cute little sphere sitting on a table, and you found the volume. Well, maybe it's a big sphere, an eight-foot radius. That's a huge sphere. That's big enough to fit a few people in. Anyway, that's a sphere, and we found the volume of a sphere doing geometry. In calculus, though, what we're going to do to this uh, is the sphere is going to change as we work the problem. And that's what calculus does. It allows you to measure things as they change. That's what derivatives are. They, they allow you to look at things um, as they're speeding up or slowing down or growing. Uh, calculus is the study of change, uh, among other things. So what we're actually going to do is we're still going to deal with the sphere, and we're still, uh, uh, still going to use that same volume formula. But now in calculus, what's going to happen is the sphere is going to be growing as we work the problem. It doesn't sit still. And so what we have here is a radius of a sphere increasing at 2 meters per second. So it's almost like we're blowing up a balloon. That was a big balloon, 2 meters per second. That's pretty fast. Uh, but it, the sphere is growing, and what we're going to look for is the rate that the volume is increasing. So as the radius increases, the volume will also increase. And when you're working related rates problems, one of the first things you're going to have to do is identify what kind of formula we're dealing with, and in this case, it's the volume of a sphere. <coughs> uh, now, as far as my class is concerned, some of you other calculus teachers out there may differ on this, but since this is AP calculus, uh, on the AP exam, uh, the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. That's right. On the AP exam, uh, any volume formulas, they almost always give to you. Every now and then they won't, but for the most part, they give you the volume formulas uh, so I will also give you the volume formulas. Now, if we're dealing with like the area of a circle, I think you should know that. I'm not going to give you that. But the volume formulas that are not as common, I will give that to you. So here's how we're going to work this problem. Uh, it says the radius of a sphere is increasing at 2 meters per second. Um, now, that is some measure of the radius, right? right? We're looking at the radius. But the radius isn't sitting still. It doesn't say the radius is 2 meters. It says the radius is growing at 2 meters per second. Well, if we think about that, um, increases at, that's a change. What they're actually giving you is the derivative of the radius. So in a sense, what they just said is r prime, not r, the r prime is 2 meters per second. Um, now, I don't like the r prime notation. You know, I'm a big fan of dy dx, that kind of stuff. I like the ddx or ddt or whatever notation. So I'm going to change this. And if you look at it, the, the rate of change is per unit time. It's over seconds, and that's a meter. So if we think about our radius, it is a change in meters over a change in time. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is the derivative of the radius, and it's per, time, per unit time. So dr dt is 2 meters per second. And that's what I'm pulling off of this piece right here. The radius increases at 2 meters per second. And that's what I'm pulling into that. So we're going to keep reading the problem. The radius increases at 2 meters per second. Find the rate the volume increases. So there's the question. Here's what we want. We want to find the rate the volume increases. Um, well, again, they're talking about rates. A rate is a derivative. So they're saying find the derivative of the volume, except I don't like the V prime notation. It's going to be the volume changing 
with respect to time, where everything is with respect to time, um, at the instant when the radius is 5 meters. Now, that is just a straight-up length. The radius is 5 meters. So we're looking at a point in time when the radius is 5 meters. Now, I'm going to do something with this because my radius is not always 5. My radius is changing. My radius is only going to be 5 meters for a split second. So what I'm going to do is put a little flashbulb looking thing around that just to let me know that my radius is not always 5. Um, so that's all of the given information. And we are looking for dv dt. That's our goal. So if I want dv dt, you know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to find the derivative of my volume formula. So uh, this is volume, and I need to find the derivative of volume. Uh, and if you look at volume, it's 4 over 3 times pi times r cubed. That is a lot of multiplication, but 4 thirds pi is a constant. So I'm going to ignore 4 thirds pi, and I will leave it alone. And then I will do the derivative of r, and the derivative of r cubed not, is going to be 3r squared. But we're not done with the derivative, because if you notice, our derivatives are with respect to t. So the derivative of volume, dv dt, we're doing this with respect to t. That means t is my primary variable. t is my primary variable. Anything that is not a t, you have to give it the implicit treatment. Just like when we did implicit differentiation, when we did the derivative of y, we had to multiply by dy dx. We're going to do the same thing with related rates. As I do the derivative of r cubed, that is 3r squared, but r is not a t, so I'm going to have to multiply by dr dt. Good, good. Good, good. So now that we've found the, vol the derivative, we used implicit differentiation. I left the constant 4 thirds pi alone. Um, I will clean this up because I'm not done. This is just a small step. 4 thirds pi times 3, those 3's are going to cancel. And my derivative formula, dv dt, is going to be 4 pi, the 3's canceled, r squared, dr dt. And that's the hard part of these problems, getting that derivative and pulling the information. Because now, once I'm at this point, now that I've taken the derivative, we start plugging in all of the known information. Um, we're looking for dv dt, so I'm not going to plug anything in for dv. The rate that the volume changes is my unknown. 4 pi is a constant. Hey, where'd the rest of my 4 go? There it is. r squared. I need to plug in for r. What is r? Oh, r is 5. Now I get to use that 5. We know that r is 5, so 5 squared. And dr dt, dr dt, ah, that's changing at 2 meters per second. And I'm going to put my units in here also. My, my radius is 5 meters, right? And now when I start working this out, I'm going to do the arithmetic here. Four, uh, 5 squared is 25, right? So that's going to be 4 pi times 25 meters squared times 2 meters per second. 4 times 25 is 100 times 2. It's 200, so this is going to be 200 pi. And look at the units here. Meters squared times meters per second. That turns into meters cubed per second. Does that make sense? Does meters cubed per second make sense to you? I hope so, because we're measuring volume with respect to time. Meters cubed is a unit of volume with respect to time. So dv dt should be meters cubed per second, which it is, and that's going to be our answer. My rate, my volume is increasing at a rate of 200 meters, 200 pi meters cubed per second. So that is one related rates problem uh, that took nine minutes, um, and I went a little bit slower on that because it was the first one. You have now lost your related rates virginity. Um, don't tell your parents. Let's try another one. Uh, here's one: the base of a rectangle. Stop. The base of a rectangle. That means I'm dealing with the rectangle. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm a fan of shapes. I'm going to draw a rectangle because I know how to do that. There's my rectangle. Boink! So we have the base of a rectangle is increasing at a rate of 2 centimeters per second. Okay, let's stop right there. My base is increasing at 2 centimeters per second. That's a change. My base is changing. So what they just gave us was the rate of change of the base, dB dt, is 2 centimeters per second. Good? Alright, now I'm going to keep reading. 
and its area is increasing. So area is increasing at this unit. So that's the rate of change of the area. The area is increasing at 7 centimeters squared per second. Okay, let's keep going. At what rate is the height? Okay, here's the question. Here's what we want to know. At what rate is the height increasing? So we're looking for the rate that the height is increasing. We want to know what dh dt is. And then they say when the base is 4 and the height is 5. So we're looking at a point in time when the base is 4 and the height is 5. And both of those are measured in centimeters. Always be aware of your units. But that's not always true. Base, in, base is 4 and height is 5 is not always true. So we're going to kind of put that on hold for a minute. But we will use it. Uh, so I've pulled all the information off. Now we have to come up with some kind of a formula that we're going to use. Uh, it's a rectangle, and it's talking about area. So we're going to use the formula for the area of a rectangle, which is base times height. Um, everything is changing. The area is changing. The base is changing. The height is changing. So we don't plug anything in. Any dimension that changes must remain a variable through the derivative. So now, since we're doing stuff with derivatives, I have dB, I have dA, I'm looking for dH. So we're going to have to find the derivative. So let's find the derivative. dA dt is, look at that, what is that? BH, BH, B times H. That's a product. We have to do product rule. So the derivative of B is going to be dB dt. That's the derivative of B times the second term plus my base times the derivative of height, which is just dh dt. So I find the derivative, and once we find the derivative, then we start plugging in all of the known information. So dA dt, looking over here, dA dt is 7. And a lot of times what I'll do is, it is 7 centimeters squared per second, but I'll just kind of put the units on hold for now while I work out the arithmetic. Uh, and then in the end, I'll go back and add the appropriate un units. All right, so dBdt, um, that's 2 times h, which h is 5, plus b, which b was 4, times dh, which we don't know. And then we'll start solving that problem. So 7 equals 10 plus 4 dh dt. And we will solve this. Let me scroll back up so we can see the problem. Eh, maybe not. All right, uh, subtract the 10. You get negative 3 equals 4 dh dt. And you'll divide by 4, and you get dh dt is negative 3 fourths. Uh, and now I need to go back and think about units. We are measuring height with respect to time. In this problem, height would be measured in centimeters, so a change in height would be a change in centimeters over a change in time, and my unit of time is seconds. So my unit is going to be centimeters per second. So my height changes at negative three-fourths centimeters per second. And the negative rate, if something has a negative rate, that means my height is actually shrinking at this point. And that's going to happen sometimes. Uh, there will be some times where uh, the given information will say that uh, the volume is decreasing at 5 feet cubed per minute. And if volume is decreasing, then you know that dV dt would have to be some negative value. In this case, dH dt was negative, which means the height is actually shrinking. Uh, and so there's a couple of related rates problems. Uh, they take a lot of uh, concentration. You have to be careful with your work. And uh, always be on the lookout for things like product rule. B times H is a product. And always be aware of things like 4 thirds pi in this first problem, which is a constant. And all constants can be ignored when you're doing the derivative, uh, just as long as you remember to bring them along for the ride throughout. So there's related rates. We'll talk about these more on Monday. Have a great weekend.